Nigeria's Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, says that the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency, FEMA, will subsequently have a new mode of operation that must align with the needs assessment of states whose roads require renovation or repair. Umahi discussed this while addressing the media in Abuja on the state of roads, other ongoing projects and the new direction of the Works Ministry under his watch. Uh, Engineer Omahi says, unlike what uh, was obtainable in the past, the state governments must approve the said roads earmarked for renovation before the agency staff can mobilize to the site. Take a listen. I'm changing the scope of FEMA. When FEMA wants to intervene on any road, the <laughs> commissioner of works of that state through the governor must go for the evaluation they must agree where they are going to prepare. And when the job is done, I want the commissioner of that state to sign off. I was a governor, and uh, there are some projects that came before me, which I know very well that as a governor, I was the one maintaining it. But people stay up here in Abuja and make claims. It's not going to work under me. So we are just saying if you have uh, FEMA, if you have any place you want to intervene, you can't be more Catholic than Pope. Work with the governor of the state through the commissioner so that they will tell you the most uh, difficult place it is paining them that they are not able to. And so I've turned down all the requests for approval for new projects until that it is uh, done. And even if the job has been completed, I will not approve it unless if it is signed off by the various, you know, commissioners of the states. You have that. Uh, for more on this, I'm joined live in the studio by Senator Dave Omahi, Nigeria's Minister of Works. Good to see you and thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank I know you. it's been a busy moment because uh, right from that and so many other places, uh, you honoured our, our invitation to be here on Arise Prime Time. Many thanks for coming again. Uh, quickly, uh, less a special <coughs> on that. Uh, because uh, they've heard you talk about FEMA and a new model which you're still working uh, to Beth. And you also spoke about your experience as a, a governor uh, which informed that decision. Tell us more on that, if you will. Well, um, it's not actually changing the uh, operation of uh, FEMA. FEMA has an act establishing it. Uh, but what you're trying to emphasize is the need for all hands to be on deck in terms of supervision of our projects. It is uh, the duty of every Nigerian, especially where the job is uh, being carried out within your domain, to participate in the supervision. Yeah. Because the government will release the money. Uh, they may not necessarily be able, as it should be, to give 100% supervision. But they, I've done it in my state. You know, When some projects were going on, the community will raise alarm. Uh, shoddy jobs was being done and I asked them to stop the work and I will call the director of FEMA and the director of FEMA would you know query uh, the state uh, controller and that's what we want to bring back let the commissioners of work be part of the valuation of what you want to do some of these uh, uh, items are you know appropriated and the names of such projects are listed in appropriation so it becomes a law but what you are saying is, we are doing that, can we get the users to be part of uh, the enumeration and also to be part of uh, the certification when the job is done, so that you know, we uh, complain less to the federal government? Mm. At the twilight now, let's, uh, you, you know, <coughs> you, you moved around. Mm. And I want us to have a recap. One of the key concerns of many Nigerians uh, are those roads, some of those roads you went around and you gave uh, a list of uh, completion, a level of completion on those roads. And one is the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Yeah. Um, you, you sounded excited while you were talking about uh, the percentage of work completed on that road. And you were also with the Army of Ife, where you also uh, spoke about some other projects in, in that area of the country. Uh, let's start with uh, the update on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. W what did you find? Uh, beautiful job. Uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Uh, I've forgotten the exact uh, figures, but I think the Ogun section is about 81 kilometers. 
the section of uh, uh, Lagos is about uh, four kilometers. And I think that um, the session of Uyo is about 27 kilometers, may, may not be exact. But let me say that um, section one, uh, which goes from Lagos okay. to somewhere at Shagamu, okay. is being handled by the famous uh, uh, construction giant, that's uh, Jilo Beja. And that job is about 98% done in terms of the, uh, uh, the uh, roadway, the carriageway. But we still have some other little, little works like within the uh, median, uh, they still have drainage to do and uh, some concrete works to be done. But otherwise, they have uh, done a very beautiful job. Uh, I think there is also this issue of um, the interchanges. You know, each time Redeem Christian Church or any other of the <coughs> ministries that are cited there, there is also Islamic school along that road now. So each time they you know, had program, you won't pass that road. So what we've done is that we've uh, constructed three flyovers. But to get the uh, right of way to build the access, the way by you climb instead of following the distance, became uh, you know, a bit uh, troubling <coughs> because of compensation. And the Federal Executive Council, the previous administration, has said, look, um, let the states help out by paying compensation in such an instance and uh, the governor of Ogun State has promised, in fact, even visited the place, he promised to uh, uh, pay the compensation. Mm. The other section is um, uh, the, from Shagamu, you know, down to uh, Oyu State, down being handled by RCC. I'm very happy with it. Meanwhile, the JB on Jolobeja uh, is about 98% done. The JB on is about 96% uh, uh, done. And um, they're working, they're working. I'm very satisfied with the quality of the job. I'm satisfied with the speed. And um, I'm very, very optimistic that, um, you know, the job will be delivered. But good news about it is that um, what the three governors of Lagos, Ogun, and Oyo State, they came together and said, look, let us put life to this road. And it's part of uh, our program. It's part of uh, the new program of our ministry. They want to provide solar light, you know. It could be solar, it could be, you know, uh, light that's powered by gas throughout the entire length of the road. So the entire night, stretch? Yeah, the Nigerians can travel at night. <coughs> but I'm also saying to them that part of our policy is um, the policy of HDMI, which is a, a Highway Development and Management Initiative, which is PPP arrangement. And it's on brown belt, it's on a green belt. Brown belt is where such a road like Lagos pattern is completed. Private investors can come in because major part of our problems on roads we, is maintenance. Is maintenance. So we want private sector to get involved. And so where they can come to tow this road. So we're also proposing uh, way bridges to control the weight of, on the road. We're also proposing you know, service stations where you have towing van, you have mini clinic, you have a small restaurant, you have a small hotel, you know, a resting place. After you've done 50 kilometers, you can go there to refill your car, you can get refreshed, you can have small supermarket. We are looking at that. And then we are saying, look, if we have this light poles, we can also inject CCTV and then put, a, you know, security, you know, a squad there so that if there is anything happening along that road, they will be able to see it at a point and they will respond immediately. That is how we want our highway to be, and then we get there. Well, we'll get there, which is uh, something uh, <coughs> uh, many Nigerians will, will love to hear and see. But again, you also uh, you, you touched base uh, with those in Oshun State, and from Oshun you also went to uh, Oyo State. Uh, let us have an update with the state of roads uh, around that corridor, the Oshun Corridor. Well, um, unfortunately, the, the road going to uh, my friend's place, the New of Ife, is very bad, but it's ongoing. But we have some issues with the uh, 2022 appropriation, you know, supplementary budget, you know, uh, cleaned it off. And it has affected majorly a lot of roads in Southwest because, um, you know, the government came in a very challenging moment and that the president uh, was looking for how to intervene because of the uh, subsidy remover to uh, ameliorate the, uh, the hardship 
on the people. And then uh, we, the, the, those funds we moved from the ongoing projects, you know, and then moved for palliatives. And so we have a lot of uh, certificates generated, not paid. But there's nothing anyone can do. Uh, it, it is important to, uh, 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 to meet the feelings of the people by the reason of the palliatives. We are hoping that if we get money as uh, you know, federal government, we'll be able through 2023 appropriation return those money so that the projects can uh, go ahead. We can fix any roads, but we need the money to fix the roads. And we know the economy we inherited. So uh, it needs thinking outside the box, and we're doing that. We're doing that. We'll, we'll talk more about that uh, part of thinking outside the box. Uh, one other major, I remember, you know, the uh, twilight of the administration of uh, the uh, Buhari administration, one of those roads, uh, the Benin Aochi Obajana uh, section of the Abuja Benin Road was reawarded under the federal government uh, tax credit scheme to be financed by NNPCL. Oh, I'm happy you. you, you. So I, I recall it was at that contract signing stage, uh, but what exactly? Uh, is the update now because people from that ask is uh, asking questions. Uh, I, I don't know if your trip so far has covered that area. Yeah, my first trip covered from Abuja to Lokoja and then from Lokoja I was on that route. I was there up to 10 p.m. I returned back to Abuja and that was on Tuesday. We were inaugurated on Monday. I went on that tour because of the cry of people on this Abuja uh, Lokoja route. I went to see it and also um, on the um, you know, Lokoja to Benin. I covered about uh, 15 kilometers of that route and it got so dark, you know, 10 p.m. So I had to return back. I came back about 2.30 uh, a.m., you know, the following day. Quite interesting, the, um, the, the good thing is that the NAMPC has money for that uh, project. Yeah. But the way a couple of issues, like realignment, you know, like where the soil was discovered to be, uh, outside, you know, what was designed in terms of uh, the CBR of the subgrade. So they had to, you know, tackle a number of that. There was issue of total realignment of the road. And so this is the situation. But we have rejected the projects and they are going, I think there are about four sections and four contractors. And they will start seeing very good results. Four contractors? Yes, it's sections. Yes. Well, four contractors. Uh, how does it work? You're, you're an engineer and you've done that, uh, you know, yeah. some of the... Yeah. No, no, you can go ahead. You, you, yeah. You've done some of these a oh, while. Well. You know, it's, it's very interesting to speak <coughs> with you yeah. because you're not running for office. So when I say you've done that in a voice state, yeah. it's not as if I'm uh, trying to sell you to anybody. Sure, sure, so sure, good sure. a thing. So you've done that in a voice yeah. state. Uh, this looks like an, an aside. Once upon a time, you and I we couldn't wear white to Airborne State. Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, you were. <laughs> I, was, I actually <laughs> served in Airborne State. Yes. So yes. Uh, let's talk about how four contractors can work on that stretch and deliver the good to the people. And that's what is desirable because um, since an MPC, they have their program, you know, first phase of the tax credit. Uh, you know, scheme, and they have the second phase, and the two phases, you know, I think they will terminate in 2025, which means that they have, you know, defined funds which is made available every month based on this scheme. Mm. So instead of giving it to one contractor to stay beyond 2025, it's better to now schedule it. Like Abuja, Lokoja is being handled by four contractors. We have the Dantata, you know, in the first section, you have the Arusi second section, you have the Giot third section, I have the Gito you know, in the fourth section. Now, Dan Tata and uh, Arusi have finished theirs. I'm happy with the work they did. The guild uh, is just, uh, just done about five kilometers. And uh, the Jito own, you know, a lot of substantial part of it is failed. And that's what we are quarreling about. We've agreed that they have to go and uh, amend it, which they have, they have started. I don't want the road to be like that when Mr. President will be going to Kogito uh, 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 campaign for a party. <coughs> so we are working with them to do that. And I'm saying to them, let us look at uh, uh, the guild. They still have over, you know, um, 40 kilometers to do. And I'm seeing what happened to the section of Jito. As you're working, it is failing. And so why don't we look at redesigning it and using concrete to do that? 
and have adopted the design that is being used you know, by uh, Dangote uh, for the very troubling uh, 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 Apapa or uh, uh, Jota Road. And uh, I went there, I inspected it, I see what they're doing, it can't carry any load. And that's what we have agreed in our ministry to recommend to the contractor. If the price is going to increase, provided that road will be stable, I have to go back to the Federal Executive Council to report. So we are looking at that. So for contractors, it's desirable for them to work since we have uh, you know, defined funding. And they're doing that and they're doing very well. Well, that's uh, awesome news. Uh, now we're talking about contractors. Uh, well, it's been widely reported that you're one public officer uh, who believes in empowering local entrepreneurs in the construction industry as well as local engineers. How do you hope to achieve that? We'll come back to the concrete aspect of this whole plan. But how do you hope to do this? Well, um, I, I, I want to empower both the expatriates and the local contractors. Those who are fighting me now mostly are the local contractors. Is, it, uh, is anyone yeah, fighting and, you? Uh, yeah, I think it's out of ingrowness. Because um, they can manage the concrete road much, much better than asphalt road. And uh, what we are saying to everybody, these projects have been awarded, they are long going. But go and look at the shoulders, they are gone. Go and look at some of the pavements, they are gone. Most of the roads being done in Nigeria, I'm not talking about Jilobeja, but Jilobeja cannot do all our roads. We can't afford the cost. You know, you see them within three years, they are gone. You see some of our roads on asphalt as you are doing it is going. But the roads I did on concrete in a boy state, seven years. I think there is a place that, you know, failed, which they put on social media. Nobody says that concrete road cannot fail. If the subgrade is not properly done, the concrete road will not stand. And I think that stage, they did it during the rainy season. It's a small stretch, about two kilometers. They did it during the rainy season, and it failed. That doesn't worry me, because I know that concrete road works. So, if you are doing asphalt, no problems. We have a shaved life design for every asphalt road. And the, the uh, general condition of contracts empowers you, before you take a contract, to go and study the site and check the parameters of the design and inform yourself that the parameters are in tandem with your expectations. So you don't start and then you come back and say, well, there is a mid-design, you want to redesign the project. I'm not going to accept that. But if the project shelf life is designed for 25 years, you must commit to us, you know, by way of indemnity and the uh, legal department are working on it. It must not fail within 25 years, you know. So already we have two examples. Uh, I'm one of the uh, very few uh, journalists who were there with uh, your predecessor of Abatunde Fashola who went around the Oroshoki Apapa Road. We saw the concrete yeah. work. Yeah. And a year now uh, after, you've been there. So what's, let's talk about the, the difference. Because if we can break it in, in the layman's language, uh, how durable, how sustainable are these concrete roads because uh, they're still there for people to see. So why would you think that anyone would fight you if truly concrete roads are durable, as we've seen in uh, your state, Eboni, and in Lagos State? You know, the, the, any time you want to make a change, you will see reactions. You know, people believe that they will cut down their you know, uh, costs. No, I'm not cutting down anybody's cost. I'm not cutting down anybody's profit. Their profits are there but I just want commitment. Let Nigerians get value for the money we are paying to contractors. I'm not fighting any of them. I'm not going to encroach you know, on their work and I'm not awarding any new jobs. I'm working with all the contractors. Now, let us in, you know, in um, uh, economies, they say citrus paribus. And uh, <coughs> in making up the road, you know, a virgin road, you first of all have the feeling to a design level you know, up to the subgrade. Then you now come and have, you know, the sub base, you know, which is a better laterite. Then you now have the base course, which may be stone base. You may improve on the stone base. If it is waterlogged area, you have to start thinking about, you know, maybe mixing the uh, stone base with about five to 10% of cement. Mm -hmm. Then you put it, you compact it. So that's the base course we're having. And we say, given the base course, whether it is for asphalt, or it is for concrete, which one will last better? Yeah. If I'm putting 
10 cm of asphalt compared to if I'm putting 20 cm of concrete. Citrus paribus. The, everything about the subgrade, sub base, base cost remain constant. Which one will last more? And my argument is that my reinforced concrete road on 20 cm will last more because it's a rigid pavement. And so it, it takes all the compression. And I'm using a, you know, a reinforcement to take the transitional you know, dynamic load. So it will last more than this. If you go to Abuja uh, local road, you will see our roads on sine waves. The asphalt have floated. And then they tell you, oh, much uh, load came on it, but we have a factor of safety in our design of over 30%. OK? Now, they will tell you, oh, the asphalt was designed for 40 degrees Celsius. Now we got to 60 degrees. I don't know when we got to 60 degrees Celsius in this country. And so the asphalt will melt. So we say, OK, the concrete will not melt. Do it on concrete for us. When I was doing 199 kilometer of ring road, I spent one year, you know, we having issues with uh, contractors and a lot of big men were calling me that I should do asphalt. I said, no, I don't want to do this job on asphalt. When I have left office, in fact, I would have fell before, you know, leaving office. And then they will be causing my children and my grandchildren when I will have them. I don't yet have one. You know. they're, they're coming. <laughs> they're coming. <laughs> and so I didn't want that. So I want comfort, you know, for my lineage. I want legacy and also the fear of God. So I said, we do it on concrete. And they said, I should sign, should the cost exceed? I signed. But out of the 150 million US dollars for that 199 kilometers, I saved 60 million US dollars on the job. And big contractors, you know, did the job. You know, like CBC, CGC, CCECC, they did the job. And today I met them here. They are still part of the federal contractors. And I'm using them as example. I'm using the Dangote with high tech you know, construction in Lagos. I'm using the Arab contractor in Lagos that are also doing concrete road in some sections. You know, I'm using them. I interestingly, the, the ministry, they also have awarded a number of roads on, con on uh, concrete. Why? They say because uh, the place is, uh, you know, swampy. Why should anybody think about using, you know, asphalt on east-west roads? Why should anybody think about that where you have very high water table? And so this is what we are, you know, arguing about uh, definitely the concrete road depending on the design will be a, a bit more expensive you know but that some of the roads that are ongoing that could say to be twice the cost of using concrete and yes concrete will last much better than such roads we can't afford such high cost and well, uh, the, the, you, you see the benefits also of concrete there will be no time that we talk about oh we have problem of importation of bitumen. We are trying to develop our bitumen, you know, in Ondo State. That will make things a bit easier if we want to overcoat <coughs> the, the concrete. Now, this will create jobs. The manufacturers of cement as of today cannot meet up with the concrete, you know, roads demand when it starts. You know, so there may be it's a gap of, uh, say, we want to import cement. But you can't compare it with importation of bitumen. There is so much pressure on the Naira. By using concrete, we reduce the pressure on the Naira. There is so more fluctuations, you know, of the international, you know, uh, petroleum product, which is the bitumen is a byproduct of that. And today we are looking, doing augmentation, a project that will start at this price. Within one month, you see the projects being reviewed or the job is stopped. We believe that the cement manufacturers will increase their you know turnover they will reduce cost bua has already said they are reducing costs i'm talking with dangote i'm talking with uh, you know lafarge and again over 10 companies have indicated interest in citing new cement factories this will create jobs this will create more cement this will create you know a reduction in the pressure of our you know, Naira. And, and if that is given some speed to, to, to some extent, uh, the country should not even think of importing cement, uh, owing to the fact that you're talking about the pressure on the Naira. You know, there's uh, also the issue of payments and debt owed contractors and the frustration due to bureaucracy these contractors go through. And uh, you were quoted to have said that you don't intend to be frustrated by uh, civil servants. Uh, but again, how do you work uh, to ensure that some of these contractors 
who are complaining are hard done by about some uh, unnecessarily uh, delayed tactics uh, and not frustrated in pushing that these uh, jobs are uh, meet deadlines. Well, I met different kinds of civil servants in Ministry of Works, in all honesty. Uh, they are very committed, very committed. You know, like this morning, in the morning, I woke up and uh, I dictated what I wanted, you know, and I snapped it and sent to them. And I said, please, by 10 o'clock, I want to have these memos. I want to have these files. Before 9.30, these things were already. So I met different kinds of uh, very dutiful and uh, committed and honest civil servants and Minister of Works. If they would be otherwise, maybe I could see that tomorrow. I don't pray for that. But they're cooperating very well. I have agreed that we treat files, you know, tumultuously. Uh, but there are some of the projects I told you that there, there are no money to fund it. Mm. So even if we do the certificate and everything, there's nothing anybody can do. Even in your house, there's time you have a budget, there's no money to meet it. So you have to wait. So that is the issue. But if we have money, we can fix any road. Look quickly, is the ministry, your ministry, is it all about roads? Uh, what about bridges and other infrastructure? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, very good. Uh, we have checked all the bridges all over. I'm making a memo to Mr. President. We have in the first instance, you know, to attend to the bridges. You know, some uh, have gone bad, no maintenance culture. And so we have about 34 billion, you know, uh, emergency bridges we need to attend to. Now we have the top mainland bridge, very serious issue. They we've closed the, the top mainland bridge against heavy trucks because there are some deflections on the cantilever sections of the slab. And if you're on there, you sometimes see pukum, pukum, you know. <coughs> you, we cannot reverse it. But when we stop the further deflection, then, you know, we can use the asphalt to make it up back. You know, it will not go back any longer. And then the ones that have not, we have to attend to it very quickly. Um, the section built by Gerald Beja, the section built by Italian Company. But most critical, Beyond that, it's still the columns or the piers in mm. engineering term uh, that are going bad. Then the foundation, which is the pier cap, is also going bad. Then the issues of uh, you know challenges by the reason of uh, you know illegal miners who go to excavate sand. There. We are looking at all of them. The Eco Bridge, the Qatar Bridge, the Tomilna Bridge. There are three bridges. That if anything, you know. So, wait a minute, sorry. Those yeah. small canoes we see when we drive across the bridge, those people taking sand yeah, from yeah, under. Yeah. So, they it's actually cause, uh, causing havoc yeah. to, that, to the yeah. bridge. Because uh, we have two kinds of piling. We have pilings that we call end piling, you know, where we get to the rock. So, we embed the pile, which is carrying the bridge on the rock. But there are ones that are, you know, the, the, the rock or this thing is endless. So, it's called friction piling. So where the thing is held by friction, and these frictions are provided by the sharp sand. So the more you excavate it, the more you weaken the inability to, you know, for the pies to stabilize. Uh, and so that, that's very dangerous. So we're looking at making an emergency memo. The eco bridge is going on, and uh, it's the only one now that is allowed to take, you know, heavy trucks. The other ones are closed for heavy trucks, but we, these bridges need immediate attention. Otherwise, you can't even rebuild them with trillions. Now, as we get uh, <laughs> the needed attention to the bridges and the roads, what more? P people will want to understand your ministry so that they know how to channel some of the complaints, apart from bridges, roads. Oh, you, oh, what well, other well, infrastructure? Oh, there, 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 there are also uh, flawed you know, control measures. You know, we have a lot of problems now you know, where the flaws are cutting our roads. And I give you an instance, you know, Last year, there was this flood when the Cameroon, you know, released their water. They have released it again. I don't the, the, know the what is going down. to happen, yes. And then for one week, trucks could not come through Lokeja to Abuja. The whole route, you know, blocked because of floods. But there was one bridge. Uh, I don't know the name of uh, the, the, uh, um, the, the, the named after the longest bridge, you know, that Lokeja axis. It got to a level that the flood could not reach it. So that should have been our design level. Maybe it is the Murtala Mohammed Bridge. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's uh, uh, Mutala's bridge, yes. Th that level is good level. The, this thing could not get. So 
when I went there, I looked at the sections that is affected by floods, and that is, uh, you know, um, about 1.6 kilometers. And so the solution to this is a combined effect. The combined kind of bridge, and then the other section will be with a retaining structure. What are we trying to do? To raise the road level above the flood level so that the water can go under the distance and then create some um, relief covert. So we do things like that, you know. So flood is a major challenge to our road construction. Mm. This is very, very important. And of course, I have told you about our program on tolling. We have about nine uh, routes, including Lagos, Ibadan, including Abuja, Kaduna. Let me also tell you uh, that uh, Abuja, Kaduna, Zaria, Kanu Road. Abuja to uh, uh, Kaduna, we can say to be about 60% um, done. But Zari, uh, Kaduna to Zaria is 100% completed by Jilobeja. Then Zaria to Kano is about 70% uh, done by Jilobeja. Beautiful, great, you know, wonderful work. And it's going to last. As we talk about it being last, uh, one beautiful place I, I had the privilege of being was... Uh, the second Niger Bridge, uh, just a few days before it opened to public. Yeah. But the sad part is now we know <coughs> that uh, there is uh, some kind of vandal, uh, act of vandalism going on there. So what's your ministry doing to ensure that these uh, vandals uh, don't... I I'll put this together with another one because we're almost uh, running out of time. The Bodo Boni Bridge. Uh, perhaps we we'll, should also be able to have uh, an update on that. I think that, that bridge is being done by um, LNG. Uh, they are bringing a proposal. There is a road section that must be completed before that bridge could be deployed. So they came to my office and I said, let me see, because they said that the former president signed an executive order. And so the request for this to be presented, so I said, okay, let me see the previous executive order so that I can attach to the new president. Okay. to give information on that. So that is the position. And I think it's about 90% uh, done, you know, as far as that is concerned. But um, the... Second Niger Bridge. The Second Niger Bridge. Yes, the Second Niger Bridge is said to be, you know, about 98% done. Uh, yes, who drums are removing the guardrails uh, on the bridge so soon? And that's uh, disturbing. But it has no structural effect. It's just preventing people from, uh, you know, crossing over to the river unless people that want to commit suicide. We pray God no one should do that any longer in this country. But then, um, there are two interchanges that are very critical to the success of that route. The one interchange is the one doing by Jiro Beja. Uh, it's been awarded to them. And that's about 84 billion. It's not started. It takes you out of Asaba. So, and it brings you to the second Niger Bridge. So you don't have to go through the bottleneck of, uh, you know, the Asaba Township. If you have to do that, then the Second Niger Bridge has no value. Then you get to the Second Niger Bridge, then you have another interchange that will take you, you know, out of Onisha. You can stay in that Onisha for five hours. So the Second Niger Bridge has no value. It's been awarded to, in Arusisi, I think 110, you know, billion naira. So I'm putting this together to... Um, seek the knowledge of Mr. President. I'm also a bit skeptical because I know the problems we are into now. But these are the two things that must be done. And when it is done, we are tolling it, and then we are putting service stations, we are putting solar light, and then we are putting cameras, and then put a security you know, at our service stations. Now, talking about security, I, again, when you speak, I just w you know, visualize the kind of roads, the, the, sign, the you know, we all do road trips abroad, yeah. but we we'll come yeah. back home, we yeah. can't yeah. attempt that. That's our vision. Yes, we're hoping that that comes to pass. Speaking of security, you know, it can be very worrisome when your property is linked to something uh, disturbing. For instance, look at Third Milan Bridge. You talked about, you just gave us a prayer. Yeah. And deep in me, I said, amen, no one should commit suicide on yeah. our roads. But that's your property, the Third Milan Bridge. Is the ministry looking at a way of, uh, you know, monitoring people who have started going towards the bridge to jump off and take their lives? Yes. I have always said there are certain problems that only God Almighty can solve. But what you're doing 
to mitigate that is um, we are thinking about CCTV camera and I've discussed with the governor of Lagos State. But under the bridge, we want to know what is happening under the bridge. We want to know also what is happening on the deck. And so I discussed with him on a PPP kind of arrangement where we can have, you know, stations at, you know, maybe about four stations and we link our CCTV, you know, on these stations and they will be able to see what is going on in those uh, locations. So if we see somebody who is endlessly, you know, approaching the bridge, then that is for a different thing altogether. And then the security within that section, which is he should be able to approach within five minutes, will be able to arrest the situation. We have all this distance. It's part of the renewed hope agenda. It's part of uh, President Tinibu's, uh, you know, uh, um, divine calling to do all these things. So he has very wonderful and beautiful ideas. And uh, I believe that God brought him to do all these things. And we are just following him. Uh, to do that which God has called him to do. So we do all this. And we're hoping to see how you can actually bring the good in every state to Nigeria. Engineer Dave Mahi, <laughs> Minister of Works. I need, your, I need your prayers. I need um, your ideas uh, so that uh, together we will support Mr. President to accomplish that which God has asked him to come and do for Nigeria. Thank you very much for being here.